Hello grandkids. I'm here to do part three to the book of numbers because I want to get this done but as you can see there's so much going on in numbers because that's like the last um close to the last of Moses you know being on earth you know doing all the work of the Lord that not that you know I'm trying to let you know okay and um you like my shirt it says no Jesus no peace like no like knowledge right but then it says in white no Jesus no peace I love this shirt I found it in the thrift store well anyway I'm gonna take off these glasses and put on my reading glasses so I can read a whole lot better and I don't have to be like this just trying to read so um here we we're gonna start in chapter 17 I stopped on chapter 16 whenever they rebelled against Moses and Aaron remember whenever the the Korah and the son of Levi and the 250 leaders and all them and what happened to them in chapter 16 okay now we're moving to chapter 17 where the lord wants to deal with um these rebellious people and he wants to stop putting into it so god tells moses to tell the children of israel's um tribe leaders to you know remember there was 12 because there's 12 uh sons of israel so there are 12 leaders and um so he tells them to bring a rod each one to bring a rod so there's going to be 12 total and Moses um, wrote each tribe name on the on the, a rod, and then he wrote the leader's name on it. Now Aaron's name was written on the rod of Levi, because he was the leader for the tribe of Levi. And then Moses was given instructions by God on how he was going to choose who was the leader, right, for the people of Israel, uh, regarding like who's going to be the ones, the priest, and is going to be teaching them, and who God's going to be speaking through to the children of israel so he tells them to he tells moses write each name on the rod place them in the tabernacle of meeting the rod of the man whom i choose i will blossom remember this is a stick this is a rod so it's not in it's not like it's still got the roots and it's in the ground or anything no these are you know a stick a, a wooden stick like a pencil you know uh sorry uh like a piece of wood you know no lead in the middle but it's solid wood and god did this to get rid of the complaints himself from the children of israel against moses okay because they went at him like who do you think you are and aaron who do you think you are and this and that so and um god was real caring this is what i love about the lord because we get to see all different sides of our lord god almighty who is also our father you know he loves us he you know uh, today, present time, if you believe in his son, Jesus Christ, you are a believer in Christ, but you're also a son of God because God adopted you into his family through Jesus Christ dying on the cross for our sins and us accepting that, you know. The whole, we get so many things. God gives us so much, you know. He gives us eternal life. He, he gives us the title of children of the Lord, you know, of God. We, you know, we can say, yes, I'm a son of God. Yes, I'm a daughter of God that's what's so beautiful you know and then um so it's i say wow you know um aaron's rod out of all those 12 that were put inside the tent of the meeting the meeting of tents or tents of meetings or i just say the sanctuary where the lord is at right um the one that budded was aaron's and whenever they brought it out it was budded with flowers almond flowers but also whole almonds that i mean you see how powerful God is? So that's why reading these books, there's more detail in that chapter, chapter 17, guys. So um, I'm just summarizing the some of the good parts out of it. Well, what I think is good, you might read it and you might find other better things that you might say, wow, why didn't grandma talk about this? Look, I want you to read it. I want you to go in there and I want you to read this. And anyone else that's following this, you know, that's why I'm just trying to give you some, some points in there. So God did this to get rid of the complaints himself from the children of Israel against Moses. And um, I said, uh, Aaron's rod was kept before the testimony as a sign against the, ba the rebels, against the complainers, so they can stop already, <laughs> you know, and also so they won't die. They keep complaining. What happens when they complain? The Lord is ready to get rid of them and start all over again with, with Moses. You know, and Moses didn't want that. Moses loved the children of Israel. Those were his his brothers and sisters also, you know, that's their family. Moses comes from the tribe of Levi, as his brother Aaron did, you know, and he loves the children of Israel. He you know, he might have been raised with the Pharaoh in the um 
you know, in Egypt and everything, but he knew where he was from. Y'all got to remember this. He knew where he was from. So here we have now um, chapter 18, Numbers chapter 18. And the Lord's going to give the uh, priest and the Levites, you know, remember the Lord blessed um, the Aaron's family. He blessed all the other children from his father's siblings and all that to be uh, servants and be there helping them out with the priestly duties. So God speaks to Aaron, specifically to Aaron, and Aaron and his sons and his father's household, that they were, they're the ones that are going to bear the inequity related to the sanctuary, okay? The inequities are the sins associated, you know, uh, with the priesthood. Like, they, they are the ones that are going to be bearing all that. They're the ones that are going to be listening to what the people of Israel bring to them, like they, they are like confessing to them, telling them. God already knows this. God hears all this and God sees everything. But these are the things that the Lord made rules and uh, regulations and the offerings that they have to give and what they got to give for different types of, offer, you know, different types of, of offerings, you know, peace offering and grain offering and all kinds of different things that are written in the book of Leviticus. And Moses has repeated in the book of Numbers and he's still repeating, you know, and it was in Exodus and everything. It's just con a continuation, a repetitive thing because God doesn't want them to forget. Moses doesn't want them to forget either. And at the same time, he's teaching and he's getting um, uh, everybody ready because he's fixing to leave. He's already been told he's not going to be around anymore. So Aaron's brothers, the Levites, the tribe of his father will join with them and serve while Aaron and his sons are before the tabernacle of witness. They will attend to their needs and all the needs of the tabernacle. So what it's saying here is that Aaron's brothers, while they're over there with God, Aaron's brothers, uh, father's brothers are going to be dealing with getting, collecting all the, like the animals and everything like that, that the people are bringing. Because, you know, God gave Aaron, gave the Levites, you know, Aaron's brothers as a gift to him. Remember, we read this. We read all this stuff. So God gave to Aaron um, so they can help him. And it says, no outsiders. It's got to be from the family of the tribe of Levites. It can't be anybody outside of that. It's just got to be them. Nobody else will be allowed because if anybody else tries from another tribe to come and, and do the duties of the priesthood and all that kind of stuff, they will die. So the priesthood is a gift. To Aaron and his sons. Them being like Aaron is the priest. His sons are the priests. So his, his father's brother's children. They're going to help them out. They're going to help the priest with all the other kind of things. So that's what um, that is happening in chapter 18. They also. Um, God is not. In chapter 18. He's letting them know the more gifts that he gives to Aaron. He's, he gives them charge of his heave offerings. All the holy gifts of the children of Israel. A portion is given as an ordinance forever. Holy things from the fire. I mean, he's like taking care of them food-wise also from his offerings that the children bring to him. They're bringing them all pieces, you know, meat from here and this and that. They get to keep a part of that. And, but they got to eat it in the Holy of Holies because they're bringing it to the Lord in the Holy of Holies. And that's where they got to eat it. The, the, and this is all the priests, okay, like Aaron and his sons. Also, God's not finished because he includes... His sons, he's also including the daughters, which is beautiful. You know, God includes the daughters here. So that means that um, they also get to get part of the heave offering and the wave offering. So they can also eat and everything. And um, they, that that doesn't have to be in the Holy of Holies. They get a part of it and they can eat it where they're at. Okay, so the best of oil, the, the new wine, the grain, the first fruits, every devoted thing in Israel is Aaron's and his family. The best of the oil the best of the wine. I'm like, wow, you know, God was providing for them. But they get the best because they're his priests. They're there having to go into a position, a very high position before God in the Holy of Holies that nobody else can do. None of the other tribes can do. None of the children of Israel, not even his father's brother's children can do that. Only Aaron and his family, his children that are, that are priests, his sons that are priests can do that. Okay? So, Aaron will have no inheritance in Israel, though, um, in the land that God has already, that he promised to give to the children of Israel, because God is their portion. Isn't that awesome? God is their portion, and he's their inheritance. 
you know. So, wow, to me that's beautiful because this is a precious gift. God says, I'm enough for you, Aaron. I'm your portion, you know. So, um, and God's going to provide land for them to be in you know, the sanctuary, where the sanctuary is going to be at, where they're going to be able to, I mean, you, as long as you continue reading, you're going to find out everything God, that God provides for them. And then tithe for support of the Levites. Now, these are the brothers, you know, the, the Aaron's father's um, brother's children. It says, this is not for Aaron and his descendants. It is for his brothers, his father's tribe, the Levites. God gave them the tithe of the children of Israel, which is offered as a heave offering as an inheritance. So they also get something. God's providing for them too. And But then it says, the tithe of the Levites. The Levites still had to tithe. They still had to tithe. This is the Levites will also give a tithe of 10%. It's here, Numbers chapter 18, Old Testament, from the inheritance that they receive from the children of Israel. And the Levites will give this to Aaron. They are going to give 10% to the priest, Aaron. Wow, God is still giving to Aaron. He's still going to receive something, you know. I'm like, oh my gosh, there's so much detail in there. There's so much in there. I could just keep going on with this. I'm already in... 11 minutes with chapter 18. Now, let's go go ahead and move to Numbers chapter chapter 19. And this is laws of purification. Now, in order for them to be purified, there's something that has to be done. And it includes one red heifer with no blemish or defect. No yoke can ever touch it. A yoke is something that they put on it, like a harness type of thing. They use it that they're, 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 they use to be guiding them around, you know. It's called a yoke. Um, <clears throat> it says that they are to take this red heifer outside of the camp and slaughter it. Okay, so they're, they're to, they are to kill it. They are to collect the blood, to sprinkle the blood seven times in front of the tabernacle of meeting. The heifers hide the flesh, the blood, and the off in the ofa, which is like the hoofs things, uh, should be burned while the priests are seeing it. They have to be able to see this. And then it says that. Uh, cedar wood, hyssop, and scarlet will be cast into the fire with the heifer. The priest will wash his clothes, the one that was watching, right? Uh, will wash his clothes, bathe in water, and be unclean until the evening. The one that's doing these things. Another man who's clean, he will gather up the ashes of the heifer, store them outside of the camp in a clean place, and it's kept for the congregation, for the children of Israel, for the water of purification. It is for purifying from sins. This is how they're going to purify them from sins. They're going to put it in the water. So he who touches the dead body is unclean for seven days. He shall purify with purification water on the third day and on the seventh day then he's going to be clean. So this is kept, this ashes that they burned, you know, all that stuff is what they use to purify people. The ones that have been, had touched the dead body and everything. I mean, there's more there's more in there. If y'all want to read the details, chapter 19. Okay? But this is the things they have to go through so they can be purified for the Lord, to be in God's presence, to be in the Holy of Holies, to be in the temple, to be doing, serving God. This is what people have to do to even come and present stuff to the Lord. This is all the things that they have to do that we Christians today, present time, do not have to do anymore because we accepted Jesus Christ as our offering from God okay we we're gonna get to this I mean it's just the, this part of stuff here now numbers chapter 20 this is to me like the saddest chapter I might spend a little bit of time on this because it breaks my heart when I read this um, the title of it is called Moses era at Kadesh and this is um, also the time when Miriam Moses and Aaron's sister remember her when she complained God gave her leprosy, and he, you know, she was healed and everything after seven days, but God still had to humble her, right? So Miriam passes away. She dies in the first month, March and April, and she was buried at Kadesh. So this is in the first month of March and April. It doesn't mention any mourning period for her, but remember when she was, you know, shunned, and she was, you know, made to be out of the camp. They waited for her, at least, you know, a whole, that whole time. They didn't move until she came back into the camp. So I'm pretty sure that there was some mourning for her. But she was older than Aaron, and she was older than uh, Moses also. So she was, uh, she was, 
well, you know, she was up there in age already. Um, I believe that this time period, I'm going to jump ahead a little bit because I know, I've read this before, but I know that this was during close to the 40 years already, where they already were walking around for 40 years. And the Lord, at this time, during all this time, Moses is teaching all these laws, and he's being repetitive with this. So it says here, that the children of Israel complained again in, chap in chapter 20. They complained again. Uh, I put complain, complain, complain. Wow, they complain so much, you know. Uh, you know, they were saying, if only we had died to, why did you bring us to this wilderness so we could die? Why did you bring us out of Egypt to this evil place? It has no figs. It has no pomegranates or vines, not even water. This is what was in the promised land, remember? This is what was in the promised land that they didn't want to go into. They didn't want to enter it. This is why they're more going around, you know, in the wilderness for 40 years. Because they chose not to go into the promised land. So now they're over here crying about they don't got this and they don't got that. And, you know, oh my gosh. It's like, whoa. God tells Moses in there and what to do to give them water from a rock. Okay? Because Moses goes and says, oh Lord, you know, there he is. Lord, please. He always goes to the Lord. That's what I love about Moses, that he always goes to the Lord. But he just like already, as you can see in the chapters before, that Moses already had enough. That's why God had to give him 70 helpers, right? Because he's already had it with these people, right? He loves them like a parent does, like us. We love y'all, guys. We love you. I love my grandkids too, but I can see moments of when I'm looking at my kids and I can see that they're you know, exasperated. That's the word I, I like to use with my grandkids. You're exasperating them, right? And um, so I have to be there to help with the calmness because I know that we're all, you know, made in God's image. And as you can see, God has anger. So here's Moses, and he's like had it up to here, you know, and stuff. So he God tells Moses, take a rod. Moses and Aaron, two for y'all to go take the rod. And gather the children of Israel, and I want you to speak to this rock before their eyes, and they will give them water. Well, Moses, he this is what Moses did instead. This is what he does. Moses takes the rod. He listens to the Lord. He takes the rod. Moses and Aaron gather the children of Israel. Moses then speaks to the children of Israel in anger. Like, ugh, like in this, you know, exasperation, right? He just, ugh. And... He says, here now, you rebels. Must we bring water for you out of this rock? And then Moses strikes the rock two times with that rod. And then water came up. Did Moses follow the instructions of God? Did Moses do exactly what God told him to do? It's like his nephew that the Lord, you know, when they were just sanctified on the eighth day, they were starting their, their priestly duties and they go and get the scepter and put fire from an unknown place. It wasn't from God where he started the fire, you know, on the offering. And what did the Lord do to them? Moses didn't do what God told him to do. And I said, what did you do, Moses? No, what did you do? So God speaks to both Moses in verse 12. He calls Moses and Aaron. And he says, because you did not believe, trust in me. You know, they didn't trust in God. To make him holy to the children of Israel, they both will not be the ones to take the Israelites into the promised land. I wanted to cry for Moses. He'd been dealing with these people for 40 years. He had to deal with them in Egypt every time that the Pharaoh would get a cold heart and change his mind and then he was making it harder and harder on the children of Israel and Egypt and he had to hear their cries and, and their complaints and see the things that they were being put through and then how many times God wanted to wipe them out like four times and the Lord's pleading for their lives and, and they after the second year he was ready to go into the promised land because of how they dealt with it and reacted to it they weren't able to go in there and now here they've been traveling these 38 years you know to get to the 40 years right and God's telling Moses and Aaron, y'all not going to be the ones to go into the promised land and take these children in there because I didn't trust me to make me holy. 
So both brothers got punished by God. And I'm like, both brothers? I thought this was so sad to be punished this way. But at the same time, I have to understand God too. Because they are his priests. Moses is his right hand man. His, his like you know, not he's more than a prophet because God didn't speak to Moses in a vision or in dream. He spoke to him face to face, and so they have to be obedient. They got to do exactly what God told them to do, and and they didn't do it. And you know, Moses, they, they, well, Moses is the one that did that. Well, Aaron was there. Aaron could have also, you know, calm him down, restrain them. Right? Remember, he didn't restrain the people. In the golden calf incident and Moses knew that he didn't restrain those people instead he gave in to the people and so you know Moses should have controlled the anger and Aaron should have helped him cool down too and uh, that's what we have to do when we see someone in our, our brother sister in Christ our little brothers and sisters my grandkids throwing a fit or fixing to do something that you know mommy and daddy might get mad at them for um, help them out help them calm down don't let them continue that way Oh, well, mommy's going to be mad at them, so let me get away with this over here. No, don't take advantage of that. They both got in trouble. Uh, my kids used to get mad at me because my grandkids, I'm going to tell you this. My kids thought that it was wrong whenever I used to discipline them. I used to discipline all four of them. And they didn't think it was fair because maybe one of them is the one that did something. But I had rules for them. I had them written down. They had, they knew what it was, what was there. So if one of the younger ones is the one that, that felt to obey by one of my rules, but the older ones were there present and they knew that that was part of my rule and they didn't stop them, they all got in trouble. They didn't like it, but that's the way I felt it. That how are, you know, you, you need to hold her accountable and vice versa. You need to help each other out so y'all don't be messing up because I'm not going to be around with y'all forever and I can't be... The one doing that, you know, once we leave this world, brothers and sisters, grandkids, y'all need to be there helping each other out. And that's as Christians we're supposed to be doing. And here is the children of Israel. They should be doing that for one another, too. And that's what we're learning from this, you know. So that is chapter 20 um, in verse 12. That's where you read that. So continue on still in chapter 20. It's a, Chapter 20 is busy. But that was my sad point right there in chapter 20. So here we get to Edom. In Edom, Moses sends a message to the king of Edom, which is a nation in a place in, in the Middle East. Uh, this is what your brother Israel says. You get that? Brother Israel. Because who is Israel's brother? Remember his real name was Jacob. So Jacob's twin brother's name was Esau. And when you go back to Genesis and you go, and if you haven't done your little... Um, paper here where I told y'all to write down your you know your thing so you can keep up with all this and that uh, Adam and Eve and then Noah and his sons and then Abraham and then his you know guys if you don't do that you're gonna have to be going all the way back to these chapters but the thing is remember you got to see the uh, family tree of Esau and it says that Esau is the father of Edom so here it is Edom and here's Israel because Jacob's the father of Israel, right? Because he, God changed his name to Israel. So God changed Esau's name to Edom, apparently. And so we are, you know, it, this was back in Genesis chapter 36. If you want to go back and look at that, it's in chapter um, Genesis chapter 36. So after telling Edom or reminding him of all they went through, because, you know, Moses is like, hey, this is what we've been going through. We just came from Egypt, this and this. And he's giving them a little history on that. And um, so they knew what happened because word got around of what happened to Egypt. And word got around what happened to all these um, other places where they've been at, where they have fought, you know, against some of those um, nations. So they asked to be allowed to only pass through the land, through the king's highway. They will not turn left or right. They will not go through any fields, vineyards, and drink any water. They said, but Edom said no. Edom said, oh, no. No way, Jose. <laughs> Again, Moses asked again, you know, he's like, okay, look, we will only walk through. If any of our people or any of our animals drink any water, we'll pay you for it. Just let us walk through. Moses did, did this best, you know, as best as he could to ask for passage through. But again, Edom said no and came out. Again, he, instead, he came out with an army to fight against Israel. 
Edom, which was Esau, wanted to fight against Israel, which is Jacob. These are family, twins, families, you know? I asked, why do you think the king of Edom said no and came with the great army to make sure they didn't pass through? Good question. Were they afraid Israel would take their land? Was Esau's family bitter at Jacob's family? For what happened between the brothers when they were younger? You know, Jacob getting the best blessings instead of Esau in Genesis 27, right? Or are they remembering the part of their father's blessings in Genesis 27 also? Jacob's blessings and then Esau's blessing. I did a little thing here. May God give you of the dew of heaven, of the fatness of the earth, and plenty of grain and wine. But Esau's blessing was, Behold, your dwelling shall be of the fatness of the earth and of the dews of heaven from above. Not that much difference. But then it says in 29 of uh, Genesis 27, Let people serve you and nations bow down to you. Be master over your brother and let your mother's sons bow down to you. Maybe that's the part they don't like. because in, And then in Esau's blessing in uh, Genesis uh, verse 40, it says, Be by your sword you shall live and you shall serve your brother and it shall come to pass when you become restless that you shall break his yoke from your neck. So that's something to think about. Are, are they remembering that kind of stuff and they're afraid that's going to come to fruition or what? So over 500 years have passed since Genesis 27, right? But still I wonder why they would not let them pass. So now... Here we have also in Numbers 20. We're still in Numbers chapter 20, guys. There's a lot going on there, right? He's meeting family, coming up to families. Well, we have the death of Aaron. Aaron passes away. <clears throat> Israel left Kadesh where Miriam had, had passed away and was buried and came to Mount Hor. H-O-R. Okay, or, or I don't know how they'll pronounce it in the Hebrew language. At the border of Edom. And, um... God tells Moses and Aaron in verse 24 of Numbers 20, Aaron shall be gathered to his people. He's going to, to die. Aaron will not enter the land which I have given promise to the children of Israel because he's reminding them because you rebelled against my word at the water of Meribah. God does not forget. So God tells Moses to bring Aaron and his son Eliza up to, mount, to the mountain of war and strip Aaron of his priestly garments and put them on his son. Moses obeyed God and did this in the sight of all of Israel. And Aaron died there on the top of the mountain. Moses and his nephew, Elizer, came down from the, mountain, uh, from the mountain without Aaron. And Israel mourned Aaron for 30 days. I said, oh, Moses now lost both his siblings. He lost his sister and now he lost his brother. So he's, you know, without his siblings. And, and I mean, that's powerful right there. Now he's like, whoa. And I know, like, again, I'm jumping ahead of myself. Um, numbers, in Numbers chapter 33, I find out exactly his age when he passed away exactly. Um, that Aaron passed away when he was 123 years old. So his 40 years had passed. Uh, he died on July, on the fifth month of um, the 40th year. So he died on the... Uh, the fifth month would have been like July or August, but on the first day of that month, on the 40th year, when he was 123 years old. So that's something to think about. So we're already getting to the last, you know, parts of um, their lives because he wasn't able to go through. Um, Mar Miriam didn't. And um, so if he was 100, and what did I say he was? 123, then Miriam was like about 126 or something. So here we got... Um, Numbers 21, I'm, I'm 29 minutes into this. Let me try to just do a few more minutes. Uh, so that was chapter 20. See how there is a lot to go on there? And I didn't even give you all the details. This is an awesome chapter to read. So let's get to Numbers chapter 21, where the Canaanites are defeated at Hormon. So king of Arad, the Canaanites who dwelled in the south, heard Israel was coming. He fought against Israel and took prisoners. <clears throat> Israel made a vow with the Lord. If you deliver them to us, we will destroy their cities. And God listened. And he delivered, he delivered up that king and the Canaanites. And Israel um, destroyed the cities. So the Lord hears and he listens, right? But they journeyed from Mount Hur and where Aaron had died by the way of the Red Sea around Edom. And the people became discouraged because Aaron, I guess, you know, losing Aaron, losing Miriam... I guess they started getting discouraged. I don't really know exactly why they were being discouraged. But 
they complained again. Oh my gosh, they complained again. I, I did not learn it. But this time they complained against God and Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? There's no food, no water, and our soul loathes this worthless bread. They're talking about the manna. There's like I'm like, what? They're calling the manna worthless? God gave them this to eat, and it's worthless bread? Oh my gosh, whoa, they just made God mad. Don't you think they made God mad? He, he provides this bread for them, and they're going to call it worthless? Oh my gosh. So God sent poisonous snakes among the people and they started biting them and many Israelites were dying and quickly the Israelites you know they repented I mean because they knew what was happening they just like sometimes we got to control what, when we're angry or, or get discouraged what comes out of our mouth because you got to be very careful my grandkids be careful my children be careful because what we say oh my gosh you just got to be careful because someone's listening God is listening he just provided for you something. He's been providing for you all these uh, time that you've been wandering in, in, in the wilderness out there having a hard time. You didn't have to worry about anything and he's providing something for you to keep you going. And you want to complain about it? Oh my gosh, no. So quickly the Israelites repented. They confessed their sin and asked Moses to pray for them because they knew Moses was the answer, right? Moses, pray for us. Well, again, Moses prays for them, but this time Moses was told to do something. He was going to have to start doing something. You know, his prayer was not enough for this. This time, I mean, they were complaining against God. They were talking about what he provided for them. So it was much more serious. Uh, but this time it says, make a poisonous snake and put it on a pole. All right? If someone got bitten by a poisonous snake, they looked at it and, it did, and they didn't die. This time they were not, this is what I wrote down, I put, this time they were not all, you know automatically saved like that just because they prayed and, and called well they called out to Moses you know and Moses prayed for them by prayer via Moses the children of Israel had to physically do something also to be healed yes they confessed that they, what they did was wrong but Moses made the object commanded by God it resembled it resembled the very thing that was killing them but they the Israelites had to look at it they had to look at it to be reminded of what they were doing and what they had, what caused, what they caused on their, themselves in order to be saved. So they had to look at it and they had to believe that they would not die. You know, why did God choose a serpent or a snake, a poisonous snake? I had asked, you know, I get into all these kind of things. I ask questions when I'm doing my Bible studies by myself. Could it be, could God be remembering the serpent from the Garden of Eden? Um, that caused Adam and Eve to sin and get kicked out of Eden? You know, that's what started all this. <laughs> You know, in John 3, uh, chapter 3, verses 14 and 15, Jesus describes himself.